obviously with the baby on the way, we were down in the basement and uh, looking through all the baby stuff to see what we need, what we what we have too much of and can sell. And um, yeah, I came across the baby bottles. And it got me thinking about our spiritual maturity. Um, just as, as babies crave milk, um, so do we as new believers. But just as babies grow and develop and start to eat more solid food, we need to do the same with our spiritual life. Um, so tonight, I want us to consider where we're at in our spiritual maturity. Um, and we're going to look at some practical steps to mature and grow in the Lord. So let me ask you guys, what would you think if you're out to eat, you're at your favorite, favorite restaurant, right? You're with a group of people, and your server brings your food, and, and you put your steak down, and your loaded baked potato, and everything looks so good. And just as you're getting ready to take that first delicious bite, you look over, and you see one of the couples drinking milk out of a baby bottle. You know? Or, or what if you're at work and, and you're on break and you see one of your coworkers pull a baby bottle out for lunch? Um, you know, I'm sure we would all have a few thoughts running through our heads, right? Um, but why? Why? Milk's good for us, right? Milk is good for us. So why don't we just drink milk all the time like we did when we were babies? Now my guess is, if we were to see someone beyond a couple years old drinking out of a baby bottle, um, we, we might wonder if that person maybe had some kind of de developmental problem or something like that. Um, and this is because at a certain point, we expect to see people to begin progressing on a more solid food. All right? So let's look at our scripture passage for tonight and see if we can make a point to all this. So turn with me, if you have your Bibles, to Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5, verses 11 through 14. And that reads, We have much to say about this, but it is hard to explain because you are slow to learn. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use, have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Evil. So what is the author of Hebrews addressing in these verses? Well, the writer of Hebrews, up until this point, had been talking for four chapters about the superiority of Jesus. And then all of a sudden he interrupts the discourse and he kind of begins to chastise the readers um, regarding their spiritual maturity. And he challenges them to um, go towards growth and progress, okay? Now, the idea of someone drinking out of a baby bottle, it, it's comical to us, right? But yet, if we could see what we look like in the spiritual realm, I wonder how many of us are still walking around with bottles in our mouth. How many of us, you know, I'm curious, how many of us Christians only go to church on Sunday or, or Saturday night, and then that's it? go there once a week and we look to get bottle fed by the pastor and that's it. You know, that makes sense if someone is a new believer, right? But why would anyone else want to approach their spirituality in this immature way? Well, it basically comes down to one thing. Laziness. Okay? Because of their laziness, the Hebrew people had simply not moved forward in their understanding of the things of God. Okay? As a matter of fact, they actually moved backwards to the point where they needed to be taught the basics of the faith all over again. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it, right? If you only go to church, you know, once a week and, and, and get bottle fed, and then you never put into practice what you're learning, or through your laziness, you never study the Bible on your own, you, you're not going to retain what you learn for one hour a week, okay? And therefore, you're going to stunt your growth in Christ. Now, through this simple analogy, Hebrews compares the elementary teachings of the faith to milk and the deeper teachings about righteousness to meat. All right? And just as milk is important and has its place among babies, so is basic biblical teaching among newborn believers. I mean, when you, when you first get saved, yes, you, you have to learn the basic fundamentals and, and the basic truths. Okay? But at some point... You have to progress to the more weightier teachings of the Bible. And then as you grow and mature, some things in our life should reflect that. When people look at us, 
they should be able to see that we're growing in the Lord. So we're going to take a little spiritual maturity test just to kind of see where we're at. So just kind of do this in your mind. Um, but the first question is, how do you handle problems? How do you handle problems? A mature person is positive during trials. James 1, verses 2 through 4 tells us to consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Okay? So do you have joy? Or do you sit around anxious and worried and, and mad at God when you're facing some kind of trial? The second question. How do you treat others? How do you treat others? A mature person loves their neighbor. Do the people around you feel loved? Or do they feel like you could care less about them? Number three, do you watch what you say? Do you watch what you say? A mature person has control over their mouth. James 1.26 says, If anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. And also like what Ephesians talks about in uh, chapter 4, verse 29, it says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful, or building, helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. All right? The tongue is a powerful thing. Do you have control over it? Fourth question, how much do you depend on God? How much do you depend on God? A mature person is a prayerful person. James 5.16 tells us the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Do you spend time daily talking with God? Do you spend time daily talking with God? Now, I know we could all grow in at least one of these areas. If not all of them. Okay? And that's why I like our vision statement here at Agape. Knowing and growing in Christ. Knowing and growing in Christ. It sums it up perfectly. Knowing and growing in Christ is something that we should be doing until the day we die. Okay? We always can strive to be better. Okay? So how do we grow in Christ? How do we grow in Christ? Let's look at three things that can help us. Number one, develop godliness. Develop godliness. Second Peter 1.3 tells us, His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. Okay, so what Peter is saying is that the power to live a godly life simply comes from knowing God. That's it. From knowing God. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him. And then it goes on to say in verses 5 through 9, For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But if anyone does not have them, he is nearsighted and blind and has forgotten that he has been cleansed from his past sins. Okay? I love how that verse says, make every effort to add to your faith in Godliness. Make every effort. Chase after it. Right? Chase after it until you achieve it. Okay? When an athlete wants to add something to their game, what do they do? They practice. They chase after it. They make every effort. They train. Okay? They train. And that brings me to my second point. Train yourselves. Okay? Train yourself. A couple years ago, um, I read a book called Radical by David Platt. And in this book, he talked about how when he was in China, how serious they take their biblical studies. Okay? They will travel two hours in the dark, in secret, gather in a secret place, where they'll sit on the floor with one light in the middle of the room, and they will study the Bible for hours. And if, and if you're there to preach, if you're not going to preach for four hours, don't even bother. That's how they feel. Okay, and I, I remember 
This book really made me feel like crap, actually, <laughs> when I read it. I mean, it, I felt, because, you know, here in, in America, you know, we drive to church in our cars, we sit in nice buildings in our comfy chairs, and we're looking for the exits after an hour and a half. Um, I feel like a lot of times, you know, and then, and then we might not even pick up our Bibles during the week, right? You know, a lot of times we take advantage that we can worship freely here in the U.S. You know, in China, they can be killed or thrown in jail just for having a Bible in their bag. Okay? So I really, I mean, we're all guilty of it, but I feel like we, we should stop taking advantage of our freedom to worship and really start to take our training more seriously. You know, mature believers, they have learned to distinguish good from evil. And they have done this by constant use. Okay, Paul wrote, For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things. Okay, spiritually mature people understand the importance of spiritual training, and they develop habits that will help them grow in godliness. Okay, and they don't do these things to gain acceptance from God, but rather because of their desire to know Christ more deeply, to grow in his love, and to better understand how to live their lives to please him. And, and as you learn new things, don't just hold on to it. Okay, get out and share it with someone. That brings me to my third point. Teach others. Teach others. 2 Timothy 2.2 says, And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses entrust to reliable men who will also be qualified to teach others. Okay? Now, I'm not saying that we all have to become, you know, vocational teachers, but something can be said um, for the fact that all of us who are growing in the things of God ought to be able to teach and pass along what we're learning to somebody else on some level, right? To encourage them and help them to grow closer to God, all right? So as we close tonight, I, wanna, I want you to go home and ask yourself these four questions. And really think about it. The first one is, in what ways do you find yourself being lazy when it comes to knowing growing in Christ? In what ways do you find yourself being lazy when it comes to knowing and growing in Christ? Number two, what are you learning this month and how can you teach it to someone else? What are you learning this month and how can you teach it to someone else? The third one, do you think God is satisfied if we stay baby Christians our whole lives? Do you think God is satisfied if we stay baby Christians our whole lives? And if not, what practical steps will you take this week to train yourself in a more mature relationship with the Lord? And part of that relationship with the Lord is taking communion. Um, this is our time to <clears throat> reflect on God sending Jesus to die on the cross and be that perfect sacrifice for us. Um, so as we get ready to take the, the bread and on that and, and be thankful for, for God's love. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight and we thank you for everything that you do, all your love, all your grace, all your mercy. We can never be the perfect sacrifice that Jesus was. And we thank you for that. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to accept him into our lives and spend eternity.